Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 4 of the video series where I'm going over all the plugins put out by Nick Software. In this episode, we're going to take a look at Analog Effects Pro 2. Now, if you're a big fan of old-time classic cameras and films and things like that, then Analog Effects Pro 2 is probably the plugin for you because you could uh, get these classic film looks uh, on your digital images using this plugin. Now let me stay. Let me say right off the top that I have no affiliation with Nick Software. They're not paying me to do these videos. Now what we're going to do is I have this stock image of this little girl in Lightroom, and we're going to send this over to Analog Effects Pro 2. I'm just going to right click on the image, go to Edit In, and then we're going to go to Edit In Analog Effects Pro 2. Now. I mentioned this is a stock image. I already backed it up. Uh, if you have RAW or a JPEG image, original image of your own, I encourage you to do all your Lightroom adjustments first. Then edit a copy with those Lightroom adjustments. Use this first checkbox. But since this is a stock image and I already have it backed up, I'm just going to edit the original uh, image right here. And it's going to send it immediately over into Analog Effects Pro 2. And as you can see, it already applied some settings to the image. This is uh, sticky controls. And I mentioned several times uh, throughout this video series and in my Topaz video series that I don't care for the sticky controls. But somebody pointed out to me, quite rightly so, that this comes in really handy if you're, uh, let's say, a professional wedding photographer and you always go into Analog Effects Pro 2 and apply the same filter every single time. This saves you a lot of time. You could just uh, send the images over um, and get the filter applied right away and get out and saves you um, a lot of uh, time when you're doing big batches of images. For me, though, I don't care for it. Uh, but let's just take a look over the workspace in Analog Effects Pro 2. Very typical of uh, Nick software uh, layout and even Topaz layout, very similar. Uh, on the left hand side, we have these collections or folders of different um, filters that could be applied to the image. And you can see right now we're in the classic camera collection. And if I click on it, we have these different they call them tool combinations. We have classic camera, black and white, color cast, and so on. In each one, as you can see, the black and white has a different set of uh, what actually Nick calls recipes. And we'll get to that more in detail in a minute. But for now, we could just call them presets because we're kind of familiar with what presets are. So that's at the top of the left-hand panel. Below that, we have custom. So you could create your own recipe and save it. And when you do, it will be in this custom area. Imported, if you have a friend that has um, uh, Analog Effects Pro 2 and they came up with a really cool recipe and they'll share it with you, they could export it from their plugin and you would import it with this tab. History is everything you do to an image. That step is recorded in history. So if you start going down a wrong path and you don't like what you you know, started to do to an image, you could go back along the timeline and just go back to the point before you started doing whatever you were doing that you don't care for. Instant help is just help. And if you look down here in the lower left hand side, these are called tooltips. And if you hover over just about anything in Color or Analog Effects Pro 2, you'll get uh, just a little help um, paragraph of what these do. So as you can see, as I hover over things, so that really comes in handy. Now across the top, we just have these different views. Uh, the default is sin single image view, which is the processed image. And to the right of that, you can see there's a compare button. If I click on that and hold it in, there is the original image and I let go and there's our processed image. We also have these other uh, couple views right here. If I click, there is a split preview. That's the uh, processed image on the right and the original image on the left. And I could slide this slider back and forth to see more or less of the image processed. To the right of that, we have a split view 
when you click on that we have an over under of original to the processed we click right here in between them and we would go to side by side now we're just going to use the single image view default view uh, because that works for me to the right along the top we have different zoom um, settings if you just click on zoom you could zoom in to like a one-to-one -one zoom if you uh, click on it again you'll zoom back out. You also, I believe, could hit the space bar and you could zoom in and out. When you uh, do click this, you could see there's a little navigator window pops up and you can move this square around to see a specific part of the image. Hit the space bar again, you'll zoom back out. To the right of that, just uh, right up against it, it's a little right arrow. And if you click there, you could get to different zoom percentages if you want to zoom way in or you want to zoom way out. And you could just then hit the space bar uh, to go back to the fit size, the fit view. Uh, to the right of that's a little light bulb. That will change the color of this border from gray to black to white every time you click on it. We're just going to stay with gray. Also, there's these little icons right here and right here, and that's just to close down the panel on the right or close down the panel on the left to give you a little bigger preview of what your image looks like. Now, the real meat in potatoes of this program is to the right hand panel and this is the actual filters that get applied to the image now you could see uh, this specific uh, preset I'm gonna call it although they call them recipe this spe specific recipe I click on classic camera one it has one two three four tabs in it now just to show you what we're talking about, how this is a recipe, you can see there's basic adjustments, dirt and scratches, lens vignette, and film type. Let's go over to black and white. And let's click the first one here, black and white one. And that will get applied to the image. Now, it's not saving the previous adjustments. It's just totally removing those and applying this uh, to the image. And you can see in this recipe, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six different adjustments or tabs that are here and that's really kind of the strength of the program you can mix and match things and add different things and and to one image but not include them on another image now the way I would suggest you use this program is you come in load your image in and go to this tab right here in the upper left hand uh, corner of the left hand panel and go through these presets that are contained in the different tools so we have this classic camera tab you could try these and see if there's something here you like this will save you a lot of time if there is if you say let's say like this but you don't like the vignette then you could tweak it you could go over here to the right panel and go to the vignette tab and we could take the amount down a little bit something like that or maybe you want a heavier vignette, whatever. You could just come in and then tweak this to more your liking. Um, again, every time though you pick something, so we're in classic camera now. Let's say I'm gonna jump down to subtle bokeh and I'm gonna click one of these. It will totally remove that classic camera preset or recipe that I applied and then apply this one instead. So keep that in mind. Uh, you're really going to replace one totally with another one. Now, in this case, we have two. We have bokeh and lens vignette with that. Now, the real strength of this program, though, is really you customizing it to your own liking. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to go to where it says tools here. And you can see going down here, I believe there's 14 different adjustments. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, yep, 14 different adjustments or tools. And we're going to go through these, maybe not every single one, because it, just to give you an idea of what you could do and how you would apply these. We're going to do basic adjustments first. Now we have our original image back. So if you click on compare, you could see it's just the original image, the side-by-side -side view you could see, or split view, I should say. It's the original image. So we're going to go back to the single image view. And we have one tab over here, basic adjustments. And there's just a few sliders in this one. We have detail extraction. We could just bring in a little more detail. This is a little bit like clarity in Lightroom. Maybe not, 
maybe a little more subtle than Clarity in Lightroom, but similar. So we're going to turn that up a little just for this uh, image. We have just brightness. You could adjust brightness. Now, if you want to quickly put a slider back to its zero position, just double click right on the slider with the left mouse button and you can see it returns it quickly to its zero position. Let's add a little contrast. You can see you can take contrast away. I'm just going to add a little. And we're going to just take a little saturation away on this image. All right, so I like what I did with basic adjustments. You also could add control points. And if you remember any of the previous videos uh, for like uh, Viveza, uh, we added, and for uh, Silver FX Pro, we added some color uh, control point, or we added some control points. And to do that, we could just click this little tool icon right here. And then you could click on, let's say, the sky, and you'll come up with some sliders that are now right on the image. And you could see there's detail extraction, brightness, contrast, and saturation, which are these sliders right here. And this top slider is the size, where it's going to actually affect the pixels. So right now, um, right, uh, you know, in that right-hand corner, let's say, of the sky. So we could bring brightness down in that corner if we wanted to or something like that. Now, really, I don't want to really do anything like that. I just want to give you an idea of what you could use with control points. I go into control points in detail in the Silver FX Pro video and the um, Viveza video. So check those videos out about control points. But right now we're going to delete that. All right. So those control points are very, very powerful in Nix software and um, really kind of uh, differentiate the NIC plugins from everyone else, these uh, control points. So really uh, take a look at those in depth. But right now, I like what I did with the basic adjustments. Now I don't want to replace this with something else. I want to add something to it. Now we're going to go over to this left panel and you can see as I hover over any of the other 13 adjustments, a little plus sign appears to the right. So let's, um, we're going to skip lens distortion. Um, let's go with bokeh. So we're going to click plus right there. Now you could see our basic adjustments stayed there and we have some bokeh. So we could add some bokeh strength and you could see as I do it, uh, we are kind of blurring up, blurring out everything outside of this center circle. And this transition, transition zone is between the two ovals. So the center oval, I should say. So we want to put that over the little girl's face and I want to rotate it like that. And I probably want to pull this out a little bit like that. Like that. That's good. So we have some blur strength. Um, I don't think we're going to do anything with highlights and um, that's it. I think that's good. Uh, nice adjustment there. Uh, so I want to add something else, but save this adjustment. So let's go down to light leaks and I'm going to click this little plus sign and you can see it saved our two previous adjustments. And now we have light leaks and we could add a light leak to the image. And we'll find something we like down here. Kind of like that right there, this little subtle leak coming in from the right hand side. And it has a slider here where we could adjust the strength. And it has a drop down where we could make it either soft, crisp, or kind of dynamic, which will work more directly with the image itself. And we could move it around where the center part is, like with this little um, box that pops up when I click down on it. But I think I'm going to stay with soft. Um, actually, I, I really didn't see much of a difference there, to tell you the truth. But leave it there. Maybe we'll move it over this way. I think right around there is good. So again, we could add some control points if we so choose. And you know, I think I will get into a little bit more with control points uh, with our next uh, or what we do next. But let's go down with filter type, right? Or film type, I'm sorry. So we're going to click the plus. And now we have all these uh, different kind of film uh, looks you could give your image. So we could click these warming filters. 
cooling filter, subtle black and white, uh, or black and white toned. I'm going to go with a warm look because it's obviously a warm scene. And um, probably make it a little more faded look. Uh, there's the strength. I'm going to just maybe eke that up a little bit. Now we could add some grain with this uh, filter if we so choose. Make the grain a little softer or a little harder. Make it a little harder. And that's that. So these are all these different um, adjustments and you could apply them individually to the image. Uh, they're technically filters so you're applying in this case I applied four different filters and you have up to 14 to choose from. Um, you know from frames, levels and curves, um, multi-lens look, things like that. Um, right now I'm kinda happy with what it is right now but I did wanna just touch on the control points uh, just a little more just in case you don't want to watch those other videos to, to get an idea what control points are. But let's see, let's affect the sand a little bit. So I'm going to go to my basic adjustments and I'm going to add a control point. So I'm clicking right there and I'm going to click on the sand right there. Now first off, I want to affect the size of it a little bit. We'll click there. And the detail extraction, I'm going to bring out, I could bring out more detail or bring it down. Let's see if I could find something I like. I don't like either, to tell you the truth. Um, here, why don't we just leave that as is. So I'll double click on that, put that to the center detent position. Uh, let's see if contrast, yeah, uh, contrast looks a little more appealing to me. Now let's bring contrast down on the sand. And saturation, bring that down a little bit also. No. Let's leave that alone. Okay, so we just basically bought contrast down. Now, this top slider again is the size, and you can see where I'm kind of really just affecting the total, the left hand, bottom left hand corner of the screen, and right where it was applied, it's sampling those pixels, and any similar pixels in this circled area are being affected by that slider that I adjusted. Now, I want to copy this and put it here and then copy it again and put it over here on the far right so I get the sand all the way across. Now there's a couple different ways you could do that. By far the easiest way is just hold your Alt or Option key. It's Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac. Hold that in then click on this point and you'll magically create another one with the exact same settings and then you could just kind of move it around where you want it. Now I want another one over here and I'll bring that one over there by holding that Alter Option key in. And this one I'm going to resize a little bit smaller. I don't want it going on the little girl's arm. So those are control points, just give you an idea of what they are. And if you find yourself that you're doing a lot of different control points, what you could do is you could go through, this is the first control point I entered, I click on that, there's the second. I click on that, that's the third. I could select all of these at the same time by holding the shift key in. First I click on the first one, then hold the shift key in and click on the last one. Now they're all selected. Now I want to add them to a group. I'll click right here and it now group them. If I adjust one, I adjust them all now because they're in a group. So I'll bring saturation down and you can see how it desaturated all of them because they're in a group now. So that's something that is, is comes in really handy, especially if you're adding a lot of different control points. If you want to see a kind of a different view of what the control points are affecting, what areas of the image they're affecting, click right here. Now I'm on the group, but I'm going to click this little checkbox and you can see you get this kind of negative image and wherever it's bright is where the control points are affecting. And you can see the sand going right across the bottom. We'll just unclick that checkbox and we're back to normal here. If you want to delete anything, there's the little trash can right there. And this, uh, remember I mentioned there's multiple ways to creep, to, to uh, duplicate a control point. You could duplicate them right here with this button. But as I mentioned, the Alt or Option key is a lot faster and in my mind, easier to do. So you could do that. So there's control points real quick. I just wanted to show you that because it is a very powerful feature in Nick's software. And um, 
I'd be remiss if I didn't show it. Now I have this adjustment to this image. Let's say I took a bunch of images at the beach that day and I want to apply exactly what I did here to all these different images. Well, um, it would be time consuming to apply these each individually separately to each image. So I could create this recipe. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Save right here and I'm just going to give it a preset name and I'm just going to call it test because I lack imagination right now. So we're going to click OK. And you can see right away it opened in custom. I have test. Now whatever image I bring into um, Analog Effects Pro 2, I could just go right to this custom preset I have and apply it. And then I could get in and out of the program very, very quickly. So that comes in really, really handy. <clears throat> also, excuse me, <clears throat> if you have multiple computers like me, I um, am on my uh, MacBook Pro right now, but I also have an iMac that I do most of my post-processing on, I could export uh, this, uh, this uh, preset by clicking right here. And um, I could save it then to my computer, which I'm not going to do. And I could take this over to my iMac and I could then import it into my iMac by clicking this plus button right here. And then I have this exact recipe on both of my computers. Also, then you could share it with friends and things like that. Now, I mentioned the history panel. Every adjustment step is noted. And if I want to go back to a different step, I could just click along that. And you could see I'm back to that step. Uh, I could go back to, you know, wherever I want, let's say, back to the end, right there. So that that is really handy, too, uh, that you, uh, everything is recorded in history. Uh, so, you know, if you make, you know, went down the wrong path, you started doing some adjusting, you didn't like where you went, but you liked where you were two minutes ago, just go to your history panel and pop back to it. Um, one last thing, at the very bottom of this right-hand panel, we have the loop in histogram. Uh, it's two things in one. Right now it's in the loop mode, and you could see we could look around different parts of our image, and wherever our cursor is on the image, we'll see in that loop view, and you could click on the image uh, to get rid of those control points so they're not all open. But you could see we could just see very closely down here in this uh, preview window. Next to the loop, you click on histogram and you actually have a histogram of the image. So if you're really interested, you don't want to make sure that you're not maybe click, clipping highlights or shadows, you could uh, look down here at the histogram and uh, just double check that you're not clipping anything. When you're satisfied with your adjustments, all you have to do is click save. It will save the image and it will reopen the image in to Lightroom. And there is our processed image. Now, as um, I mentioned, if you have an original image, be it RAW or JPEG, I encourage you to shoot RAW though, and you did all your Lightroom adjustments, send that uh, copy of the image with Lightroom adjustments into Analog Effects Pro 2. When you save it, you'll now have two images, one side by side, so that you'll have the backup one the one without the Analog Effects Pro adjustments applied to it. And that way, down the line, you decide you want to do something else with the image instead of this warm, summery look. You want to make it look like it's a, a fall day and you want to give it a cool look. You have the original image and you could then duplicate it again and send it over uh, to Analog Effects Pro 2 and have at it. So that's it for episode four. I hope that helps everyone with Analog Effects Pro 2. I'd like to thank everyone that watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon.